what's up you guys abu here and this is why i have youtube channel and in today's video i'm going to show you some visual code extensions that will save you a lot of time and headache of course because you know there's those frustrating things in programming or while you program or writing code and you really shouldn't be dealing with those things alone you need some tools and extensions that helps you to keep going uh, number eight bracket pair colorizer okay so basically this extension what it does is it colorizes those any pair of brackets or parentheses or uh, what they call it curly brackets like any pair of anything it would get colorized as you can see here so now what's cool about this this for the settings what's cool about this maybe even not for python but when you write some javascript things get real messy real fast so for example let's say you have those curly brackets then you have parentheses inside of them and you have uh, this i don't know what they call it, block brackets and inside them let's say you have a dictionary and then inside the, let's say this is this dictionary is inside a function or something so if this is if those are not colorized they basically you would you would lose you'd lose track of which is which okay all right so number seven code spell checker now this is a must for me okay because i english is not my native language okay so that's why I need this extension. It basically helps me with any spelling errors. I don't want to be making errors, especially in the comments or when creating variables, you don't want to be creating some silly mistakes. So for example, let's say I'm writing some comments on a source code, okay, a code base, and I want to just like, explain a few things. So for example, let's say uh, this piece, okay, of code, uh, I made this mistake by, uh, what they call it so this piece of okay, not like this a piece of code is let's say not working i'm gonna um, misspell working okay so as you can see i got this get this get line i can just hover click quick fix now i have three things to do if this is a real, a real mistake, I can just click the correct of those, like, like the correct one from this list and it, update it. Or I can basically, if it's a name, for example, uh, and it showed like if it's a, what they call it, a false positive, okay, then I can just add it to the user dictionary or to the workspace dictionary. So what does also the difference between those is if it's uh, if I add it to the user dictionary, it would ignore this word across all projects. If I add it to workspace, it would only ignore it in this single project only. So I can just click working and now it's fixed. All right, number six, draw the IO integration. So if you know draw.io, draw.io website, it basically gives you the ability to uh, write diagrams. Okay, not write, like draw diagrams. And it's a really cool website. But what's even cooler and time-saving is you be able to use draw.io inside your own website, inside your, sorry, inside the visual code. So you can say, if you okay not here if you open the folder in okay you can just as you can see i have one here so if i opened it so you basically create a file and uh, it's extension draw.io okay make sure to add the extension as draw.io and it would identify as a draw.io file then you can open it after installing the extension and it would show something like it's loading okay something like this okay then you can do all the fancy stuff you want i have some i'm sure i'm not sure if i okay but yeah you get the idea so you can for example uh you can create a new file right you can import okay you can't create a new file 
right but you can import from url from a file or whatever you can uh what else you get those uh, components tree container uh you have the uml here okay. basically anything you could want uh, real fancy yeah it's like a the, a ported version of the website uh version like, I, love, I love it okay so yeah i will do i'll make sure if uh I'll make sure to put all of the extensions links in the description and in the comment section maybe. So if I didn't make sure to remind me in the comment section. Alright, so that's it for number six. Number five, to do tree. Okay, this is the best to do list. Okay, not to do list. To do tree whatever like i use it all the time for like adding functionalities pointing to bugs so for example let's say uh, what do you use it how do you use it basically you can create comment comments okay and so for example let's say here i want to add something so i can say to do add something okay and then just forget about it until i have the time to add this thing I can just come here in the left uh, sidebar, click on this tree, and as you can see, I get a browser like for the to do uh, for the to do trees. Okay, or, for the, or a tree for the to dos basically. Now I have one in the readme. I have one in main app in the views.py. I can just basically go to it, and it will teleport me or takes me to this to do. Now what's cool is you can add your own tags. So basically this to do is a built in tag that comes with the extension. But if you set to do tree, you can add tags. So for example, you can say bug. Okay. Or maybe you can also add, uh, I don't know. They have fixed mirror. Let's see. You can also see the available 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 tags okay uh filter tree tree if we click remove tag yep we have work in progress here to do learn hack fix me fix and bug now you can use any of those so you can say fix you can say fix me you can say bug Okay, which transform to uh, uh, and, uh, uh, an emoji. Okay, uh, we have also hack. Yeah, as you can see, and they are popping up right here. So you can basically go whatever to whatever file you want to add that thing in. And once you have the time to fix them or start working on them, you can just refer to this to do tree or this. Uh, browser like and then here you can like show flat uh so it would this should take us to the yep read me uh you can filter by the tag uh you can filter the tree refresh yeah and yeah pretty fancy stuff but it's like really really practical and i'm sure it's used by a lot of people because uh not the extension, I mean the term itself, because I mean 500,000 people is a lot, okay, but as I browsed through uh, different source codes, I see a lot of people you'd be using this uh, to-do term, okay, so they would use like uh, a comment, a, comment uh, a line of comment or a comment line, and then they would type to-do at first, and then whatever they want, so I'm sure it's... Uh, it's known, okay. Uh, it's known among the other contributors and uh, software engineers. So it would be a great thing for you to pick up, right? So yeah, that's it for number five. If you are using Windows, Windows has something called WSL, which is a shortcut for Windows Sub Linux System. 
all right what does that mean that means you can run okay windows subsystem for linux okay here it is so this basically gives you the power to to run linux inside your windows system it's uh, like it would take a lot of time to explain and this could like be its own video but long story short is using this extension i can access the files and folders remotely okay to my linux system inside my windows and as you can see open any folder in the windows sub system for linux and take advantage of visual studio code full future set real fancy it's still in preview but as you can see it's used by almost 3 million or it's been downloaded 3 million times like it's a blast okay if you know if you are using i'm sure if you are using the windows uh, subsystem for linux you should already be using this but if for some reason you're not make sure to get it because it gives you the ability to like code like use visual code like it's in the windows but basically you are running on the linux environment yeah i'm sure if i i'm not sure if i got the idea across but let's assume we got across okay yeah. i would put the, some uh, guides for you guys if you want to check it out if you don't have windows basically this is like you should forget about this okay don't worry about it really so yeah this that's it for number four let's jump in to number three number three dot git ignore now this extension i found about recently okay actually i've been like i've installed it a while ago but i haven't really used it for some reason but i really really made use of it lately and it's really cool so basically when you are on the uh, creating projects and whatnot you need to create a git uh, repo okay so, I would assume you know what's github and what's a git repo and what's dot git ignore basically dot git ignore is a file you write all the extensions that or all the folders and files that you want the git repo to ignore and not track them okay you don't want the git tracker to track those files for version control now basically git is a version control system so if uh, we don't want to track all those files some of them are cache some of them are temporary some of them are could be updated and basically the only thing we want to keep track of is our own source code now to do that each language has its own files that you should ignore for example in python you have something like anything that is dot python anything under the underscore underscore pycache underscore underscore folder and you want to ignore like all of those like as you can see those that end with a slash is folders and those that end with dot spec are basically extensions files extensions so you would want to ignore log as you can see this is Django stuff this is flask, flask stuff scrappy stuff and that for you to write is a lot of work and it's basically repetitive okay and uh, so this I, I added this okay because I didn't want to keep track of my to-do markdown for the version control system I just want to have it right now nonetheless this i added to ignore the custom designs and notebox now for all of this i didn't write any of that because using this cool extension dot get ignore for whatever file you have for, for whatever project you have you can just cut, press ctrl shift p or f1 and say right dot get ignore okay and it would ask you to if you want to add a git uh if you want to add a git if you want to add a dot git ignore you press enter it would ask you what kind of programming language are you working with okay because it really okay it like 
it differs from a program from a language to language so you would basically write whatever you want so for example let's say c sharp isn't there c sharp like dude that's crazy okay maybe unity yeah we got unity so yeah so i think uh c sharp would be visual studio whatever so for example react not react javascript maybe typescript react comes with its own dot ignore so you shouldn't worry about it but for dart we have for dart dart editor like what i really care about is for python okay just click python and do it. now it asks you do you want overwrite or append now if i click append it would add it to the existing one and if we scroll as you can see where is it yep here it is so anything after this is the appended uh or the automatically generated dot git ignore now you like uh, if you are using this for the first time and you don't have an already existing file you should use create instead of append all right so that's it for number three let's jump in to the to number two and here we are with number two get lens get supercharged so basically this gives you a uh, advanced capabilities about git inside visual code so things like okay as you can see where is those features so you can get a uh, current line blame annotation, authorship code lens status bar blame i will explain all of them just give me a sec file history view repository view line history not all of them like i'll just try to give a i'll show you some you can go check the rest by yourself so basically if now this okay this file as you can see here is has one author now if there is one more than one contributor to the project uh, it would show you more now one author it's me so i can go and see each line when did it got added so for example this got added in the two point 0 0.1 change this corner okay this is the commit message now and this was added four months ago in the add in lp which is that nat natural uh, language processing and basically okay this is the commit message this is when it did happen and this is the code that was committed or created now that's cool and all right what well, also you can do if i press escape to exit you can uh where is it it should be under here right this no it's this no where is it okay get lens supercharged it's hidden for some reason okay let's hide the remote host yeah here it is so you four months ago and you can show comment search comment reveal comment and repository <laughs> repositories and repose view anyway uh, open revisions open commit commit on github open directory now also what you can do is if you travel through time okay if you clicked this it would show you the changes between the current code and the previous commit so we have this code before the last commit the red lines are basically deleted the green lines are added and those normal lines are the it didn't change okay so as you can see that's real fancy you can also see who did the changes you can copy so for example if you had something and now you want to get back you can just select copy paste it in the current version and yeah you can go through changes with this up and down you can what else get log and it'll show you like a 
visualized uh, as you can see uh, this is the master uh, repo and we can see add deployment settings update settings update config uh, i can like go of that like hard reset to this commit soft reset you can add tag branch cherry pick like everything you want as you can see and here those so some merge merges happened over here okay so we we went to a different branch then i merged to the main branch and yeah real 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 fancy stuff uh there's also like there's a lot of things you can do with this that i can't uh get lens so close unchanged paths compare head copy comment id copy comment directory compare all changes pitch repository repos uh focus on final history view get commands uh, open changes with revision provision different tools with different tools like this shows you the difference between the files you can open a repo on a remote machine a lot of fancy stuff i will let you to explore it i can't cover everything i haven't used everything in it so yeah go on with it yeah and uh, let me know what you think about it so yeah that's it for number two and here we are with number one the settings sync now i've heard some news that this will be integrated into visual code which i hope so now what's cool about this extension it's basically all of the themes and extensions you have installed and any configuration you will do to those extensions will be only available in your local machine the machine you are working on right now but what if for example you have that uh work machine you have your uh local machine okay or your machine basically you have maybe a remote machine that you do some fancy stuff with it like a server or something or maybe if you are dual booting between linux and windows and uh, you want to have the same settings across uh, across operating systems you should use this settings sync okay no matter what okay like this is a must because it would store all of your uh store all of your details okay not details store it would store all of your preferences and customization and store them on into a git uh guest okay it's like a file a file hosted in github it's private and all of the configurations would be into that then you can configure it to for example uh, be updated whenever something changes so if i looked up getting settings sync after okay you can press control uh, shift p or f1 and type settings sync where is it settings or oh yeah it's sync it's sync sync so you have download settings now this would download all the settings from my uh, guest repo i can uh, see how to configure it. this you should probably refer to this or, or for once you install it uh, you can reset extension settings you can update and upload settings now you can also head to advanced options and you can for example you can share settings with public guest okay which probably if you want i could give you this guys and then you can basically just get my all my preferences into your machine uh you can toggle auto upload and auto download so you probably configured this in a way so uh your computer uh i used to have this before installing the windows subsystem for linux I used to have a dual boot between Linux and Windows, and I would uh, configure so the Windows machine is the source. So you 
enable auto upload on the windows and auto download on the linux this way whenever you change something on linux it does not reflect to the uh, guest and github and but whenever you change something on windows it auto auto uploads it to the github and then your linux system auto downloads it so that way you you keep your machines in sync and whenever you install or change something for example let's say i changed the font okay it would reflect into that i added this color pair brackets pair colorizer it automatically it's it automatically adds that and it reflects into the uh, kist extensions so yeah it's really 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 cool and i think it's like it's, it's really practical okay i think you you must use it so yeah that's it for this video hope you've enjoyed today's video and make sure to make use make use of those extensions and make sure to hit that like button for us to keep going and also check the uh, 100 100 python track in the 100 python track package in the description for more details so yeah that's it for this video and see you in the next one peace out